Michael, the Lord has graced you with the privilege to speak at many platforms worldwide. To name but a few, in the United States and Canada, you spoke at uh, some key leadership conferences, Promise Keepers, Chicago. In Europe, you had the privilege to speak at the European Union in Brussels. Think about the parliamentary gatherings in New Zealand and Australia. What about the great PACLA conference in Nairobi, right here on the continent of Africa? And then, right here at home in South Africa, the key leadership assemblies, SACLA, the South African leadership assemblies, the most diverse gathering of Christians and racial groupings across this country. Which of these platforms stands out for you uh, as a memory you always treasure, uh, and why? Uh, it's quite hard to, to, to select out of all of those, but I think the answer is SACLA, the South African Christian Leadership Assembly. When we drew together five to 6,000 leaders from all races, all denominations, all backgrounds, it was hugely resisted by the government. Um, I could have written a book on that alone, of the resistance that we got, which made it so difficult. But it, it, it did come together. And it was quite amazing. And uh, uh, in the accommodation alone, for example, we had blacks had, had to be in white homes and whites had to be in black homes. And it was unusual. <laughs> unusual, unprecedented. I, I, I mean, you know, that produced a few fireworks, but the chemistry of some amazing breakthroughs mm -hmm. you know, and relationships. And then in the, 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 the program itself, we, had, we began and ended every day in plenary. And then we broke into five sub-conferences. First of all, clergy and senior laity, and then university students, then youth group leaders from the churches, even high school leaders, and then government, civic, and political. That was great. You can all all oh, yeah, absolutely. And so they met all, all day, these groups, and terrific things happened in, in those groups. That I can, I can tell you. Yeah, many have said it's actually shaped the landscape. Oh, I hear it all the time, you know, even now. And um, then just before supper each day, we had what we call pan-interest groups, where there'd be small groups of 12 or, or, so, or so people, and they'd be drawn from each of these things. So you could have a politician, with uh, uh, an apartheid politician, with a, a vigorous teenager from Soweto, mm -hmm. or a housewife with a, with a bishop, or, you know, a, a, a businessman with a pastor or something like that. And people shared. There were lots of anger, lots of tears. But a Harvard professor who came to South Africa to research Sackler uh, and the processes of change said in all of his career he'd never seen, with a random sample questionnaire he did afterwards, so many people change so quickly in such a short space of time. It was just fantastic. We had 500 Dutch Reform leaders, and they were revolutionized, including Professor Johan Haynes, who became the moderator of the church, and who initiated a commission in the church, which ended up saying apartheid is a sin. Wow. To me, that was a, a more effective even than the cultural, economic, and sports boycotts that came to South Africa. Absolutely. People were changed. That was, that was the main thing. And a network of relationships was released creatively and positively into South Africa for many following decades. Yeah, it was a tremendous experience. The effects far-reaching. <laughs> Indeed. That's amazing. Indeed.